Start capture. Yes, because we are macho, 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 man. Go back to your nap. Here we go. Hello! And welcome again to the Hobo and his Girlfriend Wrestling Show. My name is Hobo Tom. The one and only Hobo Tom. There's my cat. The Hobo's cat. Um, we're talking about some wrestling again. To thank everyone for watching, especially those that actually saw, that watched, that took some time out of their Thanksgiving break to watch my Happy Drunksgiving special. Again, that's up on YouTube. Uh, I did a little WW2 k 17 gameplay. Again, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Again, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. And today we're going to talk about Monday Night Raw. I'm finally on a semi-normal schedule. And I just realized that... Um, Starcade was actually Sunday. But because of my work schedule, I couldn't cover it. Sorry about that, folks. I think it's, it just turns to be like a glorified house show. It's on the network only. Um, it's one of those things people really don't have a chance to cover. Hopefully next year. I am learning. I am picking up on wrestling schedules fairly quickly. Um, I know this week, it's really just the two shows. I'm trying to see if I can find Impact and Ring of Honor. That's kind of hard to find. Because one, I am Hobo Tom. I pay with pieces of aluminum, or I barter with pieces of aluminum I find in the street. Again, Spectrum, bad Spectrum. Fun raised cable rates way too ridiculously high. There's no more, at least for now, no more Lucha Underground. There's some stuff about Lucha Underground, because apparently I am now banned in some countries. I have a death sentence. In 13 countries. I guess. I wonder if that makes me famous in 13 countries. <laughs> People are saying, who is this person and why is he banned? Um, so again, we're going to talk about some Monday Night Raw. And it was I thought it was actually a fairly fun show. With the exception of one segment. That the WWE is always screw up with. But enough about that. Let's talk about actually what went down tonight. And so first off, you have Baron Corbin comes out, and he delivers your typical authority promo. Um, the almighty Bobby Lashley is there. And of course, Drew McIntyre, the manliest man ever. Jeez, if I was Drew McIntyre, just walk around in wrestling tights. That'd be cool. Here I am in fairly sunny Florida. Actually, a very comfortable 70-something degrees in the house, which is nice. I think the only time I actually turn the heat on is when it gets... I think... I forget the last time I turned the heat on. Well, it's nice because I get to leave the air Good. Save some money! Because it is Christmas season, I still have, I think, only three more gifts to get. This is good. So again, this starts off. So again, it was a pretty good promo. Then you have a Braun video package showing how his elbow's all messed up. It just seems bruised. Again, you really can't shatter your elbow. And again, shatter your radius, your ulna, or your humerus. By definition, it's already broken, so it's not like you can really shatter it anyway. And then again, Elias comes out. His new hit single, Bob Lash talks. And he's like, yes! Renee's funny. Renee's getting better and better all the time. So this led to the first match of the evening. Remember, I only kind of review matches only because the wrestlers seem to have more input, I think. Even though they're told what to do. The, the, the matches themselves are the thing I care about. There's a whole bunch of promos. And sometimes what happens during the match or part of a promo, sometimes I'll say some things about that. But generally, for the most part, I don't really rate promos because, especially in the WWE on Raw, it tends to be a hit or miss. So I'm just like, you know what? I'll give them the benefit of that. I'll just say it's either a great seg a great, great segment, good segment, or, or the segment's terrible. But again, my, my, my scale 
and oh yeah um also post a picture of a hobo's thanksgiving nice little yummy meal i had might do that later i'm gonna set that up now i think while i talk about this match and actually for the most part it was really fun um the big thing is again you have a power person versus a power versus an even more powerful person there we go. production value woohoo one day I'll have like something in the background other than like my typical office pictures. Oh, I don't want that up though. Oh, that's right. And then also about a month, I'll have my first live stream for New Year's Day. Ooh. Or New Year's Eve. New Year's Day, I'll even do a live stream. Got, is anything happening New Year's Day? Ooh, it's a. Smackdown. Maybe a live Smackdown. We'll see. We'll see what happens. So again, this uh, Elias versus last year was really good. I mean, it was a fun match. It's a little different. It was a good back and forth. Again, you have power versus more power. Um, the only thing I don't like about this, and, and trust me, overall the match was really good. All of a sudden, I got turned into a no DQ match when Leo Rush got involved. I think he pulled the referee out of the ring when Elias went for the pin after he dropped the, the Elias elbow. It's not quite the macho elbow. It's the macho man, of course. Of course, hopefully I'll be Christmas, too. There's some really good things over at Pro Wrestling Tees. Um, I know I don't have any there yet one day i will i hope once i get monetized and can be claimed as a valid youtube person that would be good actually i think i've been at this actually almost three about nine months now of course for six of those months i've had my live stream suspended so again i'm i'm slowly learning stuff and it was it was a fun again turned to no DQ and then obviously you have the numbers game. Um, Elias tried to grab his guitar. It did the smart thing. He 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 went for the guitar, trying to hit people over the head. Unfortunately, Baron Corbin smacks him in the back with a chair, and it was for Chris Ray from there. Um, Bobby Lashley did the Braun Strowman and tribute to Braun. Not probably the smartest thing to do. Especially knowing that Braun's probably coming back soon. So he should be there for TLC. That's in the middle of the month. I want to say it's the 16th, I think. Oh, wow. I'm trying to think. You can see the gears going over my head. And this was, a, again, a really fun match. This was, if it's a fun match, it's going to be a cheeseburger match. Then Baron, then Baron Corbin's backstage again because someone actually turned on Elias' lights. They did their job. Baron Corbin said, You're fired! Firing people left and right and promoting people left and right because now all of a sudden we learn that Alexa Bliss is the head of the women's division. Then you have a Seth and Dean promo. Uh, Seth and Dean, Seth and Dean kind of recap. Uh, you have a promo of Dean in a doctor's office backstage, but it was okay. Again, I'm not gonna really rate promos. It's not my thing. Again, you watch the Macho Man old school promos, and then all of a sudden, all, all new promos seem really blah. Exception of Ric Flair, he can still deliver a good promo, and of course, Evil Becky, who you you saw in my previous video, WWE 2K17. So I think the next 2K17 going to do is going to be a Christmas special. And Christmas Eve is raw. Christmas is SmackDown. So, yeah, I'll have a couple of videos Christmas week. I'll be in the holiday mood. 
just to steal line from another set of YouTubers, Steve Farron Larson. My name is Holiday Harry, and I come from the land of effing holidays. Happy holiday. But I say Merry Christmas. I refuse to say happy holiday to people. You'll say, well, it's the holidays. No, it's not a holiday. Giving's not a holiday. I had to get back to work. I'm working, it's not a holiday. That was out of a bitch. Let's say that my girlfriend's not here. So again, we have the Lucha House Party versus a revival again. It's kind of a rematch. Um, it's good. I mean, the Lucha House Party. I, I'll enjoy a Lucha match any day of the week. Um, if they keep on going against the revival, it's gonna get kind of old though soon. Again, the revival again. Great mat technicians. Just that we just saw this match last week. And it was the same ending or the same result. Um, I'm trying to remember all their names now. Kalisto hit the Selena Del Sol, which led, and I got these two confused. I think it was Grand Metal League, and it went, did a senton, and then right behind him, Lindsay Dorado hit. A shooting star press, and that kind of ended the match. And it was a it was a good enough match, but we just saw this last week. Give us new stuff. So therefore, it's a ham sandwich. Of a match. Again, new stuff. You can be creative. Then you have a Nia Jax promo. She's not that good on the mic. Tamina still looks like a Klingon. I mean, people were chanting Ronda Rousey, break her face. Nia Jax is now the break her faces. So that's going to get old really soon. Um, so. Ronda still has to get used to the crowd's adoration. Because you can tell in the beginning, like, it's the whole crowd started chanting Ronda Rousey, and, and she really did kind of pause. Grant, granted, I, I'd probably go nuts. I'd, I mean, if I'm the hell, that's right. That's right. Chant me some more. I am Hobo Tom. If I was a face, I'd be like, yeah, that's right. I, I'd just be like, hear that? They're chanting for me. I'd have some stupid impromptu line that would get me fired. From the WWE. Get your ham sandwich. Get your chicken salad sandwich. And get out of here. You only get a cup of water. Not even bottled water, you bobo. And then, um, started to be a face off between Ronda Rousey, Nia Jax, and Tamina. So then Natty's music hits, and Natty gets jumped by the Ride Squad. Same old, same old. Um,. Then the next match was the Authors of Pain in a tag team title match versus Bobby Roode. The glorious Bobby Roode and Chad Gable. Oh, my mic. Shoot. I need a new mic. I only get a that snowball for Christmas. A new lapel mic. Maybe. We'll see. Bobby Roode's... <laughs> He looks like he's getting tired of saying glorious. It's like, it's, it's glorious. Um, Drake Maverick. It was, it was again, a, a strength versus speed and agility match. Again, you have the Brutes versus the more technical wrestlers in Bobby. And, of course, the Brutes are uh, authors of Pain, Akam, and Resort. And then you have Bobby Roode and Chad Gable, the more agile pair. And you have the speed. So, again, this is, it's a good contrasting style. And Drake Maverick, now that I remember what he's called in WWE, maybe they're rock stars, but um, he starts clowning Rude and he takes his robe. Eventually, he, he's, I guess Drake Maverick is tired of the pee-pee jokes. <laughs> Urination. <laughs> that sounds... Cracked him, it nearly killed him. <laughs> Klingons are on your anus. 
terrible. Oh, I can't believe WWE is resorting to that again. As long as it only for a short time, it'll be okay. If it drags on, it's going to get old. Again, this was, for the most part, a fun match. It was fairly one-sided. I mean, Rude and Gable did have their spots. Um, the thing is, Drake Maverick took Bobby Rude's robe, distracted him with it. He went to the back and urinated on it. So again, this was actually a really fun match. And then, of course, that distracted Rude and Rude ate the AOP's finisher. Last chapter, I think it is. A combination powerbomb neckbreaker. And it was a fun match, though. And because they won, at least there was some stipulation. There were some stakes involved. And they were earned stakes for a change. So this is a cheeseburger match. In the next match, you have Ember Moon versus Alicia Fox. Ember's so good. Fox, Fox is good too. Fox has Alicia Fox has long legs. It's weird. Either all the women are very compact or are very leggy in the WWE. Not very much in between, or they're just short, just like Nikki Cross. I mean, it was a good match. I mean, Ember Moon can still do amazing stuff. Al Alicia Fox, she has her own little repertoire. Um, Alicia Fox ate the loss due to an eclipse. Ember Moon wins. And it was a fun enough match. It, was sh it seemed short, though. So let's say a ham sandwich. But the most important thing about this match, we find out who her Mix Max challenge partner is. And it's Kurt Hawkins. Could on SmackDown tomorrow night or for the Mix Match challenge tomorrow night. It would be Kurt Hawkins' first win ever. And then we had a No Way Jose sighting right after that match. I didn't even realize No Way Jose was still in the WWE. <laughs> I actually thought he got sent down, sent back down to NXT, where he thrived. But No Way Jose came out versus Jinder Mahal. This was a one-sided match. I mean, it was. F I'll appreciate the fact that the WWE is doing something new, and they're mixing things up. At least they're not having Kurt Hawkins eat a pin again or eat another loss. So I can appreciate that. And the Mahal looks strong. Um, no Way Jose did have his moments. On Jinder Mahal picks up the win. It was good. It's new. I like it. it. Again, it was a little short, but it seemed just to be that right length of time. This was a better match than probably the previous one. So this is a cheeseburger match. Then you probably have really the match of the night, which I was shocked at, because I think it came on a little before 10 o'clock. And you have, you have uh, Seth Rollins versus Dolph Ziggler for the Intercontinental Championship, because it was an IC Open Challenge. This was a super fun match. I mean, it was high-paced match, the, the whole real phonetic pace of Seth Rollins versus a very slower, methodical pace of Dolph Ziggler. I mean, there were good false finishes. Both can sell like it's known as business. Um, my only minor quibble is, is that Dolph has to stop going for the sleeper hold. No one goes to sleep with a sleeper hold anymore. They need to bring back the Taz mission. That's what they need to do. A Kata Hajine, however you called it. Taz mission. Again, very technical matches. I, I'll tell you what, I haven't seen that many side cradles. An inside cradle since like my high school wrestling days. So that was good. Even though we've seen this match a lot of times, it seemed fresh. Um, they allowed things to breathe. It was a it was a, actually, I think, a fairly long match. I, I think it lasted a good 15, 20 minutes. It was good. It enjoyed it and made sense. This is a surf and turf quality match.
And that led us to another Alexa Bliss and Bailey thing. And it started off with so much promise. And wow, did it go south quickly. This is what kills Raw. The show was going pretty good. It had a pretty good taste to it. The wrestling was fun. The promos, eh, they, 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 Jax, it is what it was. Um, the Riot Squad kind of livened things up. Ooh, the Riot Squad jumped Natalia again. But uh, this is, uh, they had an open forum. And it was actually, I was actually intrigued by it. Because um, the one fan, the one plant in the crowd asked a question how would they change the women's division? Bailey actually gave a really good answer. Sasha killed it though. Boo, Sasha. I would get rid of you, Alexa Bliss. I'd send you to SmackDown. Send you back to SmackDown. And Bailey, are you gonna let her talk? And then, and Bailey just doesn't give good promos. And I don't think it's her. I think it's creative. I would ship you back to hell. That's not a very face thing to say. It would be funnier if you said, I would ship you back, not to SmackDown, but to NXT. <laughs> that would have been intriguing. <laughs> or go to Pro Wrestling Gorilla. No, wait, what is out there? I don't know. What, what, whatever local organization. But, and then, of course, I got Alexa mad. She jumps her. And then we had a Dana Brooks sighting. Dana Brooks still in the WWE. I like that. Again, it was it was good until this was just another one of those things with Bailey and the the creative just just it had so much potential too, but got crushed. In the final match, you have Mary Corbin versus Finn Balor. For the most part, it's a fun match. Again, we saw this a whole bunch of times. Um, it has been a while, so it did feel a little fresher. And of course, this was now when well, at least this one. Well, before it was when Baron Corbin was just a wrestler. So now Baron Corbin, or he was the constable. Now he's the general manager, so a little bit more stakes involved. Um, Finn really had a good show against him. Until again, Baron Corbin showed the power and changed the rules. No DQ match. Wait a second. I see a pattern here. Again, that kind of like spoiled it a little bit. Give Finn his win. But again, overall, again, Drew McIntyre got involved, so I started to claim or kick, kick him all over the place. It was still a fun match. It was a good, it was, it was a good, it was an okay final match. Again, this, this, this was a cheeseburger match. The Seth and Dolph really had more of a main event feel. This is just like, well, we have to do this. And the crowd likes Finn. Finn is a great wrestler. And that was it for Monday Night Raw. Again, you can always leave a comment or send an email at hoboandgirlfriend at gmail.com. Say, Hobo Tom, you're exactly right. Or Hobo Tom, you have no idea what you are talking about. But again, you can always get in contact those ways. Again, like, share, always comment. Feel free to subscribe. You can also email at hoboandgirlfriend at gmail.com. I think this is a nice short week. I'm going to put up the two videos. We'll have this one going up soon. Smackdown and Mixed Match Challenge tomorrow night. Oh, I got to relax a little bit. Oh, also, there is going to be new pro new programming direction. And I will send out, I will give everyone an announcement about